Adi's Adi Rang Adventure by E.J. Bong. Adi Rang, in Korean, carries many meanings and never ceases to be defined. And its meaning becomes deeper and changes as you mature through life. Many who speak Korean would carry their own definitions of its sound and enjoy its cathartic impact on the body and emotions. My grandma would move her shoulders up and down as if they were ocean waves and smile in spite of trials and tribulations. One could say accepting regardless, rolling with the punches, being porous, or dancing it out. However, these limit the unlimited nature of the word or the sound or the impact of the sound of the word. For our next adventure together, please share your Arirang adventures based on what puzzle pieces you have collected from the story and from your lived experiences, and what definitions of Arirang you are able to make. Also, what word or sound in your language do you have like Arirang, or perhaps a word or sound of your own creation? Contact EJ Bong at IASTATE Edu. To receive a free ebook version of Ari's Arirang Adventure, use the URL address below. Once you've downloaded the book, make sure to change your PDF view setting by selecting View, Page Display, To Page View. The book pages will be displayed side by side. Twenty Twenty One, Adi's Arirang Adventure by E. J. Bong is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non Commercial Non Derivative Four Point Zero International License, except where otherwise noted. Dedication, for living humans whose actions have evolved to the level of angels, and who have made the world a better place through their faith, courage. And friendships. For those humans who came before and lived unknown but left behind their stories to only a few. For my late grandparents, love you. Adi has been standing in a corner of Miss Babadi's house. This is the corner with the Picasso animal drawings. There is a dove, an owl, a horse, a bull and a penguin. An elephant made out of dried tree leaves is standing with its trunk aimed up high. For some time, Adi stands anxiously in the corner. This is her first night at Miss Babadi's beautiful blue house. Carefully, Miss Babadi makes Ukrainian kasha for Adi, the spoonfuls of honey collected last year. One day at a farmer's market, among the vast cornfields, Miss Babariv, who lost her son, found Adi in a dark street corner in the early morning's bright sun amid the vibrant din of the market. You will be my daughter, and you will be loved, said Miss Babadiv. In the blue house on Seattle Street, Miss Babadi greets Adi every evening before bed and always says, Good night, Adi, at the side of her bed. It would take some time, of course, maybe three years, she murmurs. When Miss Babadi cooks in her kitchen, the radio is always on. From time to time, when soft violin music plays, she would stop cooking and close her eyes. My little boy played violin just like that. Then she would slowly open her deep wrinkled eyes while swaying her body to the music. She would hold her hands together to her heart and quietly cry. I don't want her to cry. I want to make her smile, intuits Adi, 
who is slowly turning her head up from the corner. Adi loved singing in the village festivals when she was young. She loved playing bus driver, using the door of a house, assuring every pass passenger that her door bus would take them to the farthest, farthest corners of the world. She became a school dog when she wasn't sent to the village kindergarten, following along with her friends where she learned songs and dances and the alphabet delivered by the wind through the window. She loved playing school with neighborhood kids, pressing each of them on what they had learned at school. One day, Miss Babadi's old friend, Miss Monik, came over. She must have been born somewhere in Eastern Asia. You were born somewhere in Eastern Europe, weren't you? Coincidence? Where did all of your young dances go? You were a famous dancer. Then the war broke. Do you remember that? Absurdity. How about the times in New York as a cleaning lady? You never stopped going to that night school. Perseverance. Somewhere among the early adventures of Adi, little by little, she naturally found a corner off center stage and anxiously standing there, heard the words, only if you were a boy, only if you didn't speak awkwardly, only if your hair weren't black, only if you had double eyelids. And then one day, she mimics these words while spying her own reflection in a rain puddle. Only if I were a boy, only if I didn't speak awkwardly, only if my hair were not black, only if I had double eyelids. Adi tried to be loved and to belong. Somehow Adi hears the same march of chants. Only if you were, only if I were, only if you were, only if I were, only if you were, only if I were. Mr. Tomotover loves training his brain by memorizing poems while walking his dog near the blue house. Would you like me to recite some passages? How about this one for you? All the world's a stage. Adi hears Mr. Tomotover's words every day and mimics his lines. All the world's a stage. All the world's a stage. All the world's a stage. Miss Babadiv, who used to be a theater dancer, teaches Adi how to be on a stage. He must focus on the lines, not the audience. Okay, let's do it again. Kate's obedience speech. Miss Monik has a magical sewing machine and makes a school bag with a carp fish stitch for Adi. Everybody needs a good satchel. Adi watched Miss Monik's fast hand movements and various colors of fabric moving in and out of the string holding needle's eye. Miss Minkler wakes up in the morning to take care of her flower garden. In her garden, Early in the spring, surprising hellos are heard from crocuses. This cascades into the blooming of yellow daffodils and strongly colored tulips. Adi, my secret is perennials. From summer to autumn, Miss Babadi, Miss Monik, and Miss Minkler would tend the flowers together. Purple irises will come and bloom while big wild colored flowers of peonies are taking over the garden as if someone had planned them omnisciently. When the sun sets, Miss Monik will make beautiful flower arrangements with summer flowers and bring them to the dinner table. 
When that happens, Adi knows that the dinner will be full of wonderful stories, and we will play Hua Tu card games or watch Anna Karenina movies all night long. Adi remembers this feeling of being loved. It was a Catholic church where she met for the first time a softly speaking and gently smiling adult covered with long white and black cloth. People called her Sister Stella. There, Adi had an urge wanting to call her mom. Now, promise me that you are going to be a good person says Sister Stella to a small group of children surrounding her. She would hold her pinky finger towards Adi, and Adi promised. By and by, over 12 years of living in the blue house with Miss Babariv and her neighbors, Adi now learns to raise her head up and now bask in the friendship of the dove, the owl, the horse, the hen, the bull, the penguin, and the confident elephant. It was the right time for Adi to leave Miss Babadeev's house. Mr. Captain, who taught English to Adi, gifted an old bicycle that his daughter used to ride. Don't forget to wear a helmet and oil it from time to time and check the tire pressure. Rain or shine, breezy or stormy, Adi rides her bike. She pedals and pedals and she is on her way. Thank you, she calls skywards. You're welcome, Miss Babadi whispers earthwards. Adi recites poems while pedaling over the roads sometimes smooth or rough, sometimes alone or accompanied, sometimes over exciting big dips and fearful curves, sometimes against or with the wind. Adi greets horses near a barn. Morning glories on the roadside blackbirds on tree branches in the arboretum, cardinals in their nests, and 13 sun-facing trees near a dormitory. Adi has just begun her bicycle adventures into the wonderful ways of the world. Hooray! That's what I call Adirang. This space is for the title of your Arirang story and a possible Arirang word of your own. Title, your own word. <laughs>